uh, which doesn't look like a lot of fabric, it's not, um, is a ice skaters outfit from the 40s. The detail on it is just amazing. So this is basically my 1940s dragging kimono. The amount of hours that must have gone into this is ridiculous. This is my uh, most amazing dress that I am in love with and wish I could fit in. So this is basically a 1940s choice Sam. So basically they're the Asian dresses of China and Japan. If I see something, and I can't have it that time, I will go out my way to buy it for my shop because it's just super rare. And I found that and I was literally like doing a little happy dance <laughs> when, I, when I found it and like the person that was selling it to me was literally like, is she okay? I was born and bred on a market stall. My parents were antiques dealers and um, I was basically born in Victoriana. I spent my childhood in and out of France, always buying antiques and stuff and then I went to uni to do a fashion degree. I called up my mum, I needed some money and I said, oh, well, you know, as you do, you always call up your parents and go, mum, I'm skinned, what do I do? And my mum turned around and went, well, have you ever thought about getting into vintage? So I thought, right, that's it, I'm going to start up a vintage clothing shop <clears throat> or market and I'm going to sell really affordable vintage to my mates at uni. Back when I was at uni, you came out and you interned and you worked in a cafe. But because I basically assisted for four years, I got so much knowledge and knew so many people and was shooting quite a lot that I, I came out and I got offered the job at Bonafide magazine. I built up such a client base with my vintage that I, they were like, can you just stop meeting us? Oh, we want this, we want that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've got that. And I'm like, it's in my warehouse. And they're literally like, uh, well, can you just open a space where we can just come to you and everything's there. And suddenly I thought, yeah. I change the windows every week. I change, I get new stock in every week. We change the appearance of the shop every, pretty much every week. So we are not one of those places that sort of you come in and you find the same stuff time after a time, which is very, very, you know, that's what happens when you go into vintage shops. And we don't smell like mothballs. Well, I don't really have an average day. We've, we're kind of an av on average shop. Uh, walk the dog, obviously take him for a nice exercise then I normally pop into the shop um, we've normally got new stock in so I will go through the stock reprice it then um, one of the girls that works for me will come in we'll start discussing our plans for the week um, you know press everything like that who we've got clients coming in who I need to be sourcing for and then she starts doing stuff for the website so uploading stuff on the website and um, then I see I have a lot of client appointments, so the clients will come in, we'll go through the stock, what they want, what they need, you know, and everything like that. And if I don't have it, I'll source it for them. So it literally, and then it's really unusual. I mean, I can be in here like now, uh, earlier, and then I could be in here later doing private appointments. So it, my day isn't an average day. It's not like someone that works in an office where it's nine to five. This is 24 hours a day. I mean, when I leave here, I am still working on Japanese, American, Australian time scales because that's my other clients. I have like from Joe Blogs off the street that comes in and doesn't even know it's vintage until she sort of goes, are these old? Yeah, and we're going, yes, they're vintage. Um, you know, and she'll normally find something for a wedding. And then I have women that are head to toe every day, vintage. You know, they live the scene, they go to the weekenders, they are fully immersed, you know, they're singers, they're, you know, we have it all really. And then I have actresses who come from red carpet events. Passion for me exudes everything. Because if you have enough passion, you'll make anything work. Even if it's like, you know, a coffee stand down the road. If you love it enough, it'll show. You, you know, the people that you come and will buy off you will kind of understand that you really love it. 
you know, not sort of like, oh, well, it's cold outside and I really can't be asked. and, you know, you're an asshole, you know, that type of thing, you know. No one wants to see that. No one wants to see that. So you have to, it's a, it's got a constant, you know, love for something. That's a big thing for me.